Hello there, I'm Lord Jim Skull, and you're watching You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. The animated adaptation of The Killing Joke was released recently, and a long-time fan of the show kindly asked me if I could review it. Nix, this one's for you, buddy. It's been a long time since I read the comic, so this animated movie was a welcome return to this critically acclaimed story. The opening prologue, which wasn't in the original story, was rather shaky and a bit dull, but I can see why it was put in. It felt like two films in one, a solo Batgirl story followed by a Joker tale. I have a feeling it was to bump up the running time because the original comic was just a one shot so if they had just adapted that it would have had a runtime of about 30 minutes tops. It was probably also to develop Batgirl since she retired the identity before the events of the comic but I think it was also to avoid any renewed accusations of fridging. Oh, too late. If you're not sure what the term fridging is just google women in refrigerators. Anyway, moving on. I thought it was really silly that Batgirl just held onto the idiot ball throughout the entire prologue. She was always known as quite the intellect, and yet she just eagerly walked into a mobster's trap because she was flattered that he had romantic feelings for her. I also wasn't terribly fond of the way they retrofitted Barbara having sexual feelings for Batman. The scene where they have a massive tiff followed by some angry makeup sex on a rooftop was quite a surprise, though not in a good way. I am a bit of a prude however, so take that how you will. However, this may seem biased because I've always read Barbara as Oracle and so I'm kind of used to seeing her and Batman as equals. Now, it may be how she was characterised prior to the events of this story, but I still think it's a bit patronising since all she talks about is Batman so it gives further credence to the absolutely ridiculous Bechdel test. But I digress. Right, now when the second half of the film kicked in, it improved dramatically. The animation style emulated Brian Bollard's artwork as close as it could and I think they did a really good job. It was a solid and faithful adaptation, particularly the ending where Batman laughed at the Joker's gag and then left it up to the audience whether Batman killed him or not. A great easter egg in the film was a screen on Batman's computer with past photos of the Joker. Two of those photos are based on the character's appearances in Tim Burton's Batman and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. The story very much benefited from the amazing performances of the cast. Mark Hamill stole the show as the Joker, but you all knew that already. While we're on the subject of voice acting, it was superb all across the board. Kevin Conroy returned as Batman and animation veteran Tara Strong voiced Batgirl. Ray Wise was brilliant as Jim Gordon, though some of the bits in the film where he was howling in pain just reminded me of his performance in Twin Peaks. This film was genuinely as creepy and as tragic as the comic it was based on. Even the Joker's origin story was told perfectly. Not much more I can say, really. Overall, the prologue was a bit rubbish, but the second half more than made up for it. I give it 3 out of 5 creepy Joker songs. So, what did you guys think of the film? Let me know in the comments. Also, please check out my previous video if you haven't done already. I reviewed a comic about a gay Justice League based in Brighton. Thank you all very much. See you soon.